By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And welcome back to the Hill Giant Cup in Hilversum, the Netherlands. We have reached round number five and we have two very competitive decks going face to face in this episode. We have D who's playing with a corset only deck, Alpha Beta. It's white, it's blue, it's red, it's got a little bit of a black splash, and you probably know what two black cards he splashed in there, but more about that in the deck deck part of this video. And he's taking on Anis, and Anis is playing kind of blue, white, control, but with a lot of creatures in there. We've got Savannah Lion, Sarah Angel, Suchi, so there's just a lot of beef in this control deck. Now before I start with the deck deck, because I've got lovely deck photos of both of these decks, I would first like to point out that as always, you can also choose to first go to the match. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below, because there you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG Games, click on there and it'll take you straight to the game action. And here I'm going to continue with the deck decks. I'm going to start with the deck of D. Let's take a look at his Corset Brew. And here we see the deck of D, so I've called the deck Alpha Beta Suites. I mean, look at this. I mean, this is just gorgeous. It's like a work of art. And what I love about this, we've seen D on the channel before, and this is really his signature deck nowadays. He just wants to keep it to Alpha Beta. That's what he does. And he's got an awesome collection, and he's showing his love for the first, you know, ever set of Magic the Gathering, basically, with this deck. It's an homage to really the 93 format, isn't it? And it's also a strong deck, right? Because, I mean, he's really chosen the sweets out of the set and put that in here. We see a lot of, you know, pressure here with this deck. We've got the Savannah Lines turn one. You know, we've got the Set Troll, which is really hard to deal with once you have a black open to regenerate. We see the Sarah Angels. We see a beautiful Sheevan Dragon there to kind of finish the job. And then in between, there's a lot of direct damage. Shionic Blast, a full play set. Lightning Bolts, a full play set. There are those two little counter spells that kind of sneak in. And you know what it feels like when all of a sudden your opponent starts to counter something away? You always assume that, okay, if there's one counter spell, there are probably four counter spells. But in this case, there are only two. So you start playing around the counter spells, but there are not even that many counter spells in the deck. So I really like that. You know, just putting two counter spells in there that your opponent has to take a counter spell into consideration, but you probably don't want to play around it because there are only two, but you don't know that, of course. Um, then when we look at the rest of the list, you know, we see, of course, the Mind Twist, the Demonic Tutor, that's kind of the basic uh, Black Splash. We see all the power cards in here, right? We see the Time Twister, the Time Walk, Ancestral Recall. We see the Black Lotus. We see all the Moxen. Like, this is a strong deck. We also see the four disenchants that can really help. What's uh, what's interesting here is that he's not playing with any sorts to Plowshares main. He's playing two in the sideboard with two terrors. So, I mean, I think the reason for that is that he really doesn't want to give his opponent life. He's like, you know, the early threats I can take care of with the Lightning Bolt. Later in the game, I'm probably going to play out the bigger creatures myself. I've got the Psionic Blasts for like the Sarah Angels, Sengir Vampires, those kind of creatures, the Suchis in this case, you know, that his opponent has today as well. So he's kind of like, I can deal with it with direct damage. And if my opponent plays with a lot of biggies, then I can always put in like the Terrors and, and the Swords to Plowshare. So I kind of understand that strategy. What I find really interesting as well is that one Armageddon, I think Armageddon as a one-off is really quite good because you can obviously choose when you want to cast your Armageddon. If it's not a good thing for you, you're just going to keep it in hand. But maybe later in the game, there's a moment where you have a lot of those big creatures on the board, maybe a Sarah, maybe even a Shivan. Bam, you slam that Armageddon on the table. Get rid of the lands, right? Maybe you've got some jewelry on the table so you can continue casting stuff. That would be ideal, obviously, here for uh, for D. So yeah, I think one Armageddon is, is definitely good as a kind of a surprise card in the deck. Overall, this is looking like a good deck, and I think it's on its way to the top eight, and I'm not surprised at all. Now let's take a look at the deck of his opponent, Anis. And here we see the deck of Anis. So I've called it blue, white, beef control. And the word beef is in there because look at the left side of the deck photo. Those are all creatures. Three Suchis, three Sarah Angels, four Savannah Lions. And of course, the creature that we're missing here is the Surrender of Freed. So it's quite interesting to see uh, players choosing not to play with that creature anymore. The reason for that is I think that more and more uh, players are playing with multiple mazes of if in their deck. More and more players are playing with City in a Bottle in their main or even in their sideboards so it's it's made it a little bit more difficult for the surrender however if i look at the tournaments that i cover and also the tournaments being played elsewhere i do see a lot of lists that reach the top eight semifinals, win tournaments 
that do play the Surrender Pafrit in there. So I think it's still a very competitive card. And at the same time, I understand that players are kind of starting to experiment with lists that don't have the Surrender. I find it really interesting to see the Suchis here main. Um, Suchis can be quite vulnerable because they're artifact creatures. So I can, you know, shatter them. Every artifact removal spell works on them, obviously being artifacts, but also your creature removal works on them. But of course, it is terror-proof, and also you cannot, uh, it cannot be killed by the Abyss. So we see the Abyss more and more in uh, the deck kind of list, so people choose to play without mode but with the Abyss. So this is really kind of a meta call here uh, from Anis. I guess he, he expects a lot of City in a Bottles, a lot of Mazes, and a lot of Abysses, and therefore he's chosen to play with Suchi, probably over Surrender Perfeet. So those are really interesting choices. Then when we look at the rest of the deck, it's, you know, pretty obvious. If you play more of a control route, which you do with white and blue, you've got counter spells, you've got swords, you've got disenchant to fix all your problems, a divine offering here for some nice life gain, um, then obviously you're going to play with two Jam Day Tomes because from that control position, you want to start drawing cards. Very much a, the deckish-like strategy, right? And then we also see, of course, four Mishra's Factories in the... In the in the land list there and of course Mishra's Factory is kind of ideal you control the board you decide what's going to happen and when the time is right you start just poking a little bit you know dealing two damage here dealing three damage there and at the same time keeping counter magic up keeping mana open to draw that extra card with the with the jam day tome so that's that's not very surprising I think for me the most interesting thing about this list is the fact that there's no Serenib and there's a, a, a Suchi main I find it quite interesting I also like the fact that he's chosen to really play with a lot of creatures because I love combat and I think Anis actually I know him quite well I see him in a lot of tournaments he's a really nice guy I think he also loves combat you know who doesn't love to cast a creature turn it sideways so I'm quite excited for this matchup because both players you know play with creatures you know that's just exciting stuff anyway this is the list of Anis we've looked at the list of D that means we're ready let's go to round number five of the Hill Giant Cup Game number one of round number five at the Hill Giant Cup. D on the left. He's on the play with his Alpha Beta deck playing red, blue, white, and a little bit of black. Both players playing with the full playset of Savannah Lines. And on the right, we see Anis, who's playing with blue, white control. And there is a card going to the bottom of the deck. That means that D took a mulligan. So starting with six, there's a Mox Pearl and a Volcanic Island and a pass. So no Savannah Line turn one from D. There we can see a little bit. We could peek a little bit into the hand there of Anis. I see a Swords to Plowshares, for example. There's a Mox Emerald tapping the Emerald. There is a Soul Ring tapping the Soul Ring. Wow, look at all that stuff. There's an Ancestral Recall. Insane start here by Anis. What an opener for him. Let's see what D can do. If he's got a Disenchant, this will be a great moment to Disenchant the Chaos Orb. Now that Anis is tapped out, there's a Plateau by D. There's some glare on it, but I'll keep you up to date about the cards. And he's gonna pass, so I assume he doesn't have a disenchant in hand. Or he thinks, you know what, use my Chaos Orb on any of the three permanents I haven't played. It doesn't really matter that much to me at the moment. There's a Mishra's Factory. Could play out a Suchi, taking back the Factory though, playing a Tundra. Does that mean that he wants to play a Savannah Line? Tapping four. There is a Suchi and a Pastor. So wanting to keep, there's a quick Psionic Blast though. Killing the Suchi on the spot and that means that D is going to drop to 18. And I guess leaving that uh, Tundra open kind of signals possible sorts. Tapping two, there's a Time Walk. So he's going to take an extra turn. Let's see if he can find a land. Tapping four. What is he going to do? A Mind Twist. Ooh, that is brutal. A Mind Twist for three here on Anis. Doesn't have any mana open to counter. So he's going to lose three cards. And so he can keep those two cards. Okay, those three cards are going to be discarded. So two Savannah Lions and a Mishra's Factory. And there's a pass. So that was a really good card there for, for D. Unfortunately for him, uh, for D, he couldn't also make a land drop there, or else he could have mind twisted for four. There we see a Suchi coming from Anis. And he's passing the turn. So let's see if the uh, Suchi can stick. 
Remember, D is playing with four psionic blasts, so he's got some weapons against the Suchi. But he's already used one of his uh, side blasts. There's a disenchando. This is exactly why the Suchi is so vulnerable. You've got your creature removal and your artifact removal to deal with the Suchi. And he's here dropping the factory, passing the turn. This is a format where we play without mana burn, by the way. Maybe you're wondering why Anis is not taking four points of damage. There's the pass turn. So I wonder if Anis is going to animate the factory. He is. He's going to attack. Will we see a disenchant or a bolt, perhaps? There's a bolt. Killing the factory. So, I mean, D is doing a really good job at kind of killing everything that D puts on the table. There's the Savannah Alliance. Now let's see if uh, there's an answer by Anis. Not yet, at least he's taking his turn first. There's another blue for him. And passing the turn. So D now three cards in hand. I believe Anis as well. There's an attack for two, so he's going to drop to 18. There's another lion. And this is quite annoying for Anis, you know. Do you really want to spend the swords on a lion? I think eventually you do. Do you want to spend the counter spell on the line? I guess you don't. But I mean, at the same time, the line is hurting you every single turn. That's why it's such a good creature. And now we're going to see a swords on one of them. I think that's a good decision. He is going to take two from the other, though. It's going to drop to 16. So 16 points for Anis and 20 still for D. Three cards in hand for Anis, two cards in hand for D at the moment, passing the turn. There's a tap for... No, he's untapping again. Wants to keep two blue open. That makes sense for a potential counter spell. There's another Suchi. It would be great for Anis if he now can protect the Suchi with some counter magic. Let's see if D has another answer for it. Maybe a side blast on end step, a disenchant on end step. There's a counter spell though, protecting the Suchi. And D owned with one card in hand, taking his turn, drawing two cards in hand now. There's a Black Lotus hitting the board. If he can find a Brain Geyser now for D, that would be fantastic. Also because Anis is tapped out, that would be ideal for him. Does he have a Brain Geyser? That would be sick. That, that maybe if he's got a Brain Geyser now, it could actually give him the win here in game one. That would be insane. He is second the Lotus as well. I mean, this has to be a Brain Geyser, right? Wow. Amazing, amazing, amazing. I understand the play by Anis, you know, countering the disenchant, but now you gotta... Oh, man. Now you gotta think, oh, I wish I still had my counter magic open. Six cards for D here. This could be very, very decisive. I mean, it's not over yet, but... This is really, really a good move here for D. Remember, it's just game one, though. So Anis untapping everything. Hopefully he's got some counter magic in there. He can now at least attack here with the Suchi. Let's see, I'm expecting D to just take four here, drop to 16. Remember, he doesn't play Swords to Plowshares main. There's a pass by Anis. And now let's see what D uh, picked up from the Brain Geyser. Or are we going to see fireworks here in this turn by D? There's first the attack, putting Anis here on 14. And this is really an interesting battle so far. There's another Volcanic Island. Tapping four, are we going to see... Tapping five, are we going to see a Sarah Angel? There's a Sarah Angel. And a pass turn. There's a Swords to Plows here, it's on the Angel. That means D is going to go back up to 20. And remember, D is playing, I believe, three Sarah Angels in his deck. So I wouldn't be surprised to see a second one next turn. First, there's the attack with the Suchi. And D just taking the damage, dropping back to 16 again. There's a pass turn. So that line can still do some work here. For D can put uh, Anis, of course, in 12. That's exactly what's going to happen. Second main for D. Are we going to see another Sarah Angel? Still so many cards in hand there for D after that Brain Geyser. 
Tapping five. Are we going to see another Sarah Angel? Another Sarah Angel hitting the board. Another 4-4 four, four flyer. And a lion. Ooh, a lot of pressure now. I wonder if you're Anis, if you want to try to activate your Chaos Orb and step with the risk of, hit it, of running into a disenchant. And look at the hand of D now. It's kind of thinned out. Only two more cards for him. Yeah, he is going to use the Chaos Orb now. Is there going to be a response? No response. There's going to be a flip here on the Angel using his Suchi as his target. So the Sarah Angel is gone. And there's a pass. So two lines there, but of course an untapped Suchi. So if D can find a way to deal with the Suchi, he can actually disenchant Suchi, for example, and then uh, hit Anis for four, put him on eight. D having three cards in hand at the moment. Looks like he's gonna do something. Tapping five again, another Sarah. Wow, another Sarah Angel coming up here. That's kind of insane. Finding so many Sarahs. There's a mana drain there. Taking care of that Sarah Angel. That means five mana next turn. I wonder if Anis now has a Brain Geyser. That would be kind of insane. Remember, though, that D is playing, of course, with two counter spells in his deck, and we've seen none so far. So perhaps he's got a counter spell in hand. Still, if I was Anis, I would definitely take the risk. He's got five extra manas. Ooh, does he have a recall? Going through his graveyard, recall will be quite good as well with those five mana to spend. Let's see what he's going to do. I think we're going to see a recall here. Yep, there's the recall. Now the big question is, what is he going to pick up? I assume the Ancestral Recall. Let's first see if it uh, resolves. Are we going to see a counter spell? No, we're not. He's pitching two cards, picking up the Ancestral Recall. And I think Anis is kind of forgetting the mana from the Mana Drain here, because he could have used the mana from the Mana Drain instead of tapping the Soul Ring there. And the, uh, the Mox Emerald. There's an Ancestral Recall. Drawing three more cards. What an exciting game one this is. It's really going up and down here for both players. There's a Plains. Now remember, he's got a Swords in hand as well. There's a Pass. So we've got the two lines for D facing the Suchi. We've got three cards in hand, I believe, for Anis. And now three cards as well for D, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, three cards in hand for D there. How many cards for Anis? I think a little bit more than three, actually. It's hard to see. He's going to untap first, draw a card for turn. I believe perhaps he's got five in hand there. Playing an island. Do I see a Sarah Angel there? Is he gonna cast the Sarah? There's the Sarah Angel. So there's the Sarah of Anis. And now Dion going through the graveyard, probably come try to see how many counter spells he has already played. I believe one counter spell and one mana drain. He's playing with four counter spells and a mana drain in his deck. There's a pass turn. I mean, if the Sarah can stick, it's looking quite good for Anis. But it's a pretty big if. So far, Dion has been really good at kind of dealing with the problems. So there's a pass. There is another Mox. There's the attack with the Sarah. Let's see, no response. D dropping to 12. Second main, tapping four. Are we going to see another Suchi? No, we're going to see a Jam Day Tome. That's actually better than a Suchi. That's really good for Anis at this point in the game. One card in hand for him. And the Tome is really something that D has to take care of ASAP. It's going to be problematic in the long run. 
I guess the angel is even more problematic, of course, because that's actually <laughs> going to kill you. He's on 12, of course, so he, he can take two more hits. It's on a three-turn clock. And now the lines are also kind of annoying for him, because what if he's got a, you know, draws into a balance? It's actually not going to help. There we see a book activation. In response, we're going to see a disenchant. So this happens, I assume, on the end step of D. I mean, he is still going to draw a card, though, but he is going to lose the Jam Day Tome. So that's at least one problem solved for D, but the big problem is still there, and that's the Sarah Angel. So D is going to draw, or Anis is going to draw card number three here. Let's see what he can do. Attacking for four. Going to drop D to eight. So he's on a two turn clock and a counter spell in hand. Therefore, Anis, that is really good. Things are really looking up for Anis. If I was him, I would just focus on protecting the angel at all costs. Because that angel is going to bring you the victory in two turns. D is really in the tank here, attacking with the lion. And Anis taking the damage here. The reason that he takes the damage is that he's worried about a potential balance. And if D has a balance in hand, then actually the two uh, lines are quite frustrating for him. Because if he would have no creatures, a balance would be great here, wiping the board of Anis. Remember though, Anis does have that counter spell. So D really, really thinking hard. There's a tap of two Volcanics, untapping again. Tapping two, are we gonna see a disenchant on the Suchi? We're gonna see two lightning bolts, killing the Sari. He can of course counter the second bolt. He's gonna counter the second bolt. Oh, and that is, that is tough here for Anis, because now he loses two cards. And it could have also meant six damage to the dome here for Anis, you know, and then he's on four. That's really close to victory. So this was a great moment for Anis. He can untap, of course, the, uh, the mocks on the island here, attacking with both. It's an interesting move. D has to block, of course, with the, with the Savannah Lions. He's going to lose a Lion. Okay, changing his mind, though. Going to put D on four, passing the turn. And that's it. Four lands in hand for D. Yeah, that is unfortunate. Wow, wow, wow. What an exciting game one this has been, man. This has been really, really great. Both players are going to dive into their sideboards and we're going to catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So it's D on the play again after losing that first game. And look at that, taking a mulligan again. He already took a mulligan in game one. So again, starting with the card less, there's an underground C into a soul ring in the pass. Look at that hand of Anis again, an ancestral recall. That is crazy. Starting with an island, passing the turn. So no Moxen or other accelerators for him. Also no Savannah Lions by both players. There's another underground C, so let's see what he can do with all that mana. There's a mind twist. That is brutal. In response, Ancestral Recall. So in this way, it's kind of like an alternative counter spell to the mind twist. So both players keeping each other kind of in balance there with Mind Twist and Ancestral Recall. We saw that in game one as well. So he's going to lose these three cards, two planes, and a Psionic Blast. And there's a pass. There's also a City of Brass there in hand for Sutundra. Into a Felwer Stone pass. There's a Plateau. Let's see what he can do. I mean, he is playing with Setch Trolls. We didn't see them in game one, but it would be ideal now to play a Setch. He could keep a mana open to regenerate it, and he would have a 3-3 body on the board to put some pressure on. 
Perhaps he wants to keep two blue open for a potential counter spell. So D really a little bit here in the tank. What to do, what not to do. Tapping two. There is a demonic tutor. Okay, that makes it interesting. Probably gonna tutor for an ancestral recall here to draw three cards. He has that blue open. Yep, there's the Ancestral Recall. That kind of makes sense also, uh, considering that he started with the card less. There the players are going to cut each other's decks and there are three cards here for D. So now both players have resolved their Ancestral Recalls. Let's see, perhaps there's a Mox in there that he wants to play out. There's a Mox Pearl. Tapping the Pearl. There's a Savannah Lions passing the turn, probably. And uh, that's quite nice, you know. There's also a Mox Emerald, so that uh, Lion can put a little bit of pressure on the life total of uh, Anis. There's the City of Brass. There's a Mox Pearl. Has enough mana now to potentially cast a Sarah Angel. Suchi, of course, also an option. Playing a Sarah here. And I think that's a good decision also, uh, considering the fact that uh, D didn't have a double blue open to potentially counter. Now remember, D is playing with tons of Psyblast though, so that's of course, uh, the Sarah is a perfect target for the Psyblast. Exactly, are we gonna see a Psyblast here? Yep, <laughs> there it is. Yeah, it's almost like you're feeding your Sarah to the Psyblast of your opponent. And then we've seen some, some blue-white control lists that prefer playing with like more Mahamotis and stuff, which is kind of interesting as well, because a Mahamoti can like be a, a, a problem for decks like these that don't play Swords of Plowshares main. There's a Disenchant, by the way, on the... Oh, a Counterspell on the uh, Gem de Tomir of Anis. That's unfortunate. There's an attack for two, so Anis dropping to 15. D still on 18. He only took damage from his own side blast. There's a line here by Anis. Passing the turn, so are we going to see a line line block? Or perhaps both players not doing anything, having a little line stare down. Two cards in hand for D, three cards in hand for Anis. Tap of three, are we going to see a Satch Troll? There is a Satch Troll, finally, I was wondering if they were still in the deck. There's a counter spell though, quick counter spell there. And I mean, Setch is good, but it's not that good because Anis, in this matchup at least, because Anis is playing with Swords. D tapping three again. Are we going to see another set? Another Setch? Okay, all of a sudden it's raining Setch trolls. There's a card from the sideboard. A blue Elemental Blast countering the Setch. So taking care of business. And there's another pass by Anis. We've got ourselves a line stare down. There's the attack. Stare down has ended. Ooh, look at that. He's taken the damage. There's another lion. Yeah, now we've got two lions against one. There's a pass. Not even a land being played out here by Anis. Just a pass turn. There's the attack. So he's going to block one, take two, going to drop to 11. Now let's see. There's a pass. There's a lion. A lot of lions in this game. I mean, the angels are getting killed, the trolls are getting countered, but the lions, they remain. There's the pass. And I believe that's a tundra from Anis. No, it's not. Look at his hand, though. I believe there's a basic island in there as well, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Tapping three. Another Setch Troll. Setch Troll number three hitting the board. We didn't see a single one in game one, but here in game two, Anis has really, or D has really found the Setch Trolls. And remember, it's a 3-3, three, three, and you can regenerate it for one black. 
So it's a lot of value if you have a uh, Swamp in play. And of course, D has because of the underground seas there. There's the attack for three. Ooh, look at the life total. He puts it on nine, but I believe he should go to eight. Tapping four. There's a Suchi. Are we going to see counter magic or anything else or disenchant? There's a, yep, there's a disenchant on the Suchi. Suchi's gone. That means he can put Anis now on six with the next attack. There's the attack. Gonna put him on six. There's the pass. Oh, and it's looking really good for D here. Also has a counter spell there in hand for D. I saw that. So he can protect it with counter magic. There's a bolt end of the road here. Wow, and that Sextral really did a lot of work. It took a while. It was Sextral number three that finally was able to stick to the board, but it did a lot of work. It gave D the, uh, the victory in combination with the bolt. Well, the victory, it's actually 1-1. One, one. We're not there yet. We're going to go to game number three to find out who's going to win in round five of the Hill Giant Cup. D or Anis? Game number three. Here we go. So it's 1-1. One, one. Anis on the play, so I guess that makes him a slight favorite. Starting with a line turn one, so aggressive start for him. Are we going to see a line from D or perhaps a bolt? So uh, both players still have to rearrange their dice, by the way, but they're both on 20, of course. There's a Mox Sapphire and a Mox Pearl. There is a Plateau. And a Pass. So perhaps it's going to be a bolt when he attacks with the line. Just have to wait and see. There's the attack. It's going to take two. Going to drop to 18. Now both players are going to get their uh, their dice back. The hill giant you see there in the middle of the table, by the way, is the price card of this tournament. And of course, you get the playmat that says King of the Hill that D is currently playing on. There's a disenchant on the Sapphire. So trying to slow D down a little bit. Taking care of his blue mana. There's a bad lance. And D a little bit in the tank here. Perhaps he can play out a Sech. I think in this matchup I would play out a Sech even if you don't have uh, the mana to regenerate it. So I would just play it out now. If you have it in hand, of course. Because you don't really want to regenerate it because Anis is not playing with bolts. You know, so the swords can take care of it anyway, regardless if you have the regeneration mana open or not. There's a second blue by Anis, and there's an attack for two. Gonna put D on 16. There's the pass. Tapping. What are we gonna see here? Okay, there's a Chaos Orb. But D is missing a land drop here, and look at that, a counter spell by Anis. It's not looking great for D. It looks like he's really in uh, in trouble with the mana. There's the attack for two, putting him on 14. And Anisir also missing a land drop, passing the turn. Found a land from the top of Plateau. Can he do anything with the four mana? No, he cannot, passing the turn. There's the attack for two, putting D on 12. I mean, that line is doing work. And there's another one, another line on the table. And D finding another land. Okay, hopefully he can do something with it. Perhaps play a Sarah Angel. Five mana. There's a Sarah. Counter spell though. This is really an important counter by Anis because now he can attack for four. Put D on eight. And D is in serious trouble here in game number three of round number five. There's a soul ring. There's a pass. Is he gonna drop to four? That is the question. D tapping and untapping, under pressure here, of course. An earthquake for one would be so good, but I don't think it was in his sideboard. Tapping five again, there's another Sarah Angel. This time it sticks. Is there gonna be a Psyblast? Oh, a Psyblast here, perfect answer. Attacking here, gonna put D on four. 
If he has another side blast, it's the end, and it's a match win here for Anis. He's got a Suchi instead. Lots of pressure now for him. That means D needs like a balance or something to get back uh, into the match here. One blocker isn't enough. Time walk, okay. That's going to buy him some time. Let's see if he can also play out a blocker. Nope, just taking the turn though. That's unfortunate. He does have a Savannah line in hand there. So if he just has another creature, he could just play out two creatures. He could prolong his life a little bit, passing the turn here. Or not. Is he changing his mind? It looks like he's got a side blast in hand. Problem is side blast deals two damage to him as well, so that's not really what he wants. He is gonna play it out though. That means he's gonna drop to two, passing the turn. This is really a nail biter. The question here is does D have Nope, he does not. I wanted to say, does he have a lightning bolt to kill one of the lines? But Anis winning here in round number five of the Hill Giant Cup. And that was the match for today, the, the round five match. And that means that next week, we're gonna dive into the top eight of the Hill Giant Cup. Now, if you don't wanna miss a thing, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. Okay, and before you go, please take a moment to like, share, and comment. All these three things are free and really help the channel move forward. Okay, so if you like what I do, Please do one of those three things or do them all three. Be crazy, you know, share it everywhere. That would be fantastic. And, and watch another video would be great too. Now, before you go, one last thing I want to share with you, and that is the Timmy Talks Patreon page. Check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks because on that page, you can become a patron of the channel. And by becoming a patron, you can sponsor the show. So you can sponsor me financially, help me to continue doing what I do. And the cool thing is it already starts with only $1 a month. And for that dollar, you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord. You can join the Timmy Talks online events, including the online tournaments, and your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video, including this one. Let's go to the end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Ik het dus, ik het dus, zomaar gezien.